finally happened, people. We don't have to give you any more of those Jack Eichel trade watches anymore because this morning he was traded to the Vegas Golden Knights. Chris, how relieved are you at the fact that uh, this long, arduous trade news that we were all expecting for months has finally come to fruition? Well, I got to say, Julian, I'm most relieved for Jack Eichel, to be honest. I mean, I think that, you know, often lost in this is that, you know, he's been sitting there unable to get his neck uh, surgery done. You know, I think it's been a bit of discomfort for him. Obviously, it's not even just the physical pain, not to diminish that, but even just the uncertainty, right? Like you're, you don't know what you're working out for. You, you know, you don't know what your life's going to look like. I think a whole bunch of clarity comes with a deal like this. And I mean, if you're Jack Eichel, this could not have worked out any better, right? You know, you're going to an organization that does nothing but try to win and win so far in its history. You know, you're moving to a no tax state in Nevada. So he's already making more on that $10 million annual salary uh, you know, a great place to live. And, you know, I, I really do believe it's it's the kind of place, who knows, he could play the rest of his career. I mean, it's 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 hard to say, but, you know, I think that, you know, getting that kind of clarity, landing in such a great spot and then being able now in the next few days here uh, to undergo a, a surgery in something I should mention, Julian, he's going to mm-hmm. get the picket. He's going to get to choose the surgeon, where it happens. You know, as we're recording right now, he's got a couple different options, but, you know, the Golden Knights after, you know, everything he went through in Buffalo are saying, you've done all the work on this. You've met with physicians and specialists and second opinions, third opinions, 10th opinions, you know, you go ahead and plan this. We're in your corner. And so I think that has to be nice too, after some of the the battles he had with Buffalo. I should add for everyone listening and watching, this episode is going to be pretty loaded already off the top. We have a lot to say when it comes to Jack Eichel. Uh, CJ has also been busy over the last few days with his columns in the Toronto Star uh, when it comes to certain players speaking out about the NHLPA in the wake of uh, Kyle Beach and everything that has followed over the last week. Uh, We have the stick tap segment, and uh, we're going to introduce another segment called the grab bag, where uh, CJ, because he has so much on his mind, uh, we got to get to it somehow. So why not? Have a this is, grab bag. It's, it's kind of like insider trading. This is going to exactly. This is going to be the episode. I say the wrong thing or say too much because my brain isn't going in every direction all at once. And so this will be the unfiltered version, even more than normal. <laughs> I love it. I'm going right. to radio myself. Oh, man. Speaking of radio, uh, as the Jack Eichel trade was being announced early this morning, I was on TSN 690 and I got asked like, what do you think of this trade? I'm like, uh, okay, this is just what I'm thinking. So I can't imagine what you've been feeling over the last little while trying to report on this and trying to make sure all the facts were right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff flying around. I mean, this is a different kind of trade. You know, I've been around a league a long time. I haven't covered anything quite like this. I think that the fact that the surgery hung out there, you know, another thing that was probably going to happen, Julian, is there was probably going to be some kind of grievance filed by Jack Eichel in the NHLPA if this went on too much longer, just basically saying that the procedure he wanted to have, this this artificial disc replacement surgery, you know, he should be allowed to have it because he's got, you know, a number of doctors and specialists that have have said it's a fair course of action to, to treat his herniated disc. Um, so you had that, you know, obviously it was a different marketplace in the summer, you know, where this really started. You know, the Sabres talked back then to teams like the Minnesota Wild, for example, who made subsequent moves and weren't really in it as this season went along, you know, Anaheim, St. Louis, Carolina, we're all in there at various points, you know, Calgary, of course, right at the end was, was, you know, willing to to give up a fair bit. I believe for Jack Eichel, I think, you know, the, the rumor that bounced around the night before it all went down on Wednesday was a little bit overly generous in terms of exactly what was on the table from the flames, but certainly Calgary was motivated here. And, and you know, what's interesting about Calgary, right. Just to quickly go down that thread is, is, you know, they're having a great season, right? They're off to an amazing start uh, under Daryl Sutter, right up at the top of the Pacific division with Edmonton. Um, You know, those two teams, I mean, there's all kinds of angles here, but Vegas is probably taking a step back now this year. I'm not saying they'll miss the playoffs, but you know, they've got all these injuries. They're not going to have Jack Eichel for a long period of time here. Alex Tuck won't be coming back into their lineup when he gets healthy, which would have been an expectation. So there's an opportunity for those Canadian teams at the top of that division but, you know, I think Calgary is looking big picture through team beyond this year. And there's there's a lot of question marks, whether it's Johnny Gaudreau being in the final year of his contract. You had Andrew Mangiapane, who's really emerged as, as a real difference maker for that team. You know, he needs a new deal. Matthew Kachuk's still a restricted for agent coming up. 
but you, you're at the point with him. Are you signing him long term? Does he only want something short term? You know, what are you doing with him? And so, you know, I think that they saw an opportunity maybe to shake things up for the, the coming years beyond this one, you know, but they, they took a sw- swing and missed on this one. But, you know, kind of kind of plant some seeds, I suppose, for what we might see from Brad Tree Living and the Calgary Flames here, um, you know, in, in the next few months. And so, yeah, this this uh, this went in all different directions. There was a lot of information and misinformation. And I am happy, as you know, Julian, I thought there was a there was a set of circumstances here that this could have went on much, much, much longer than it did. And, and, you know, I'm just happy for, for those involved that they can move on and, and start, uh, start charting a way forward. Let's, let's talk about misinformation for a second and the Calgary Flames, because uh, what was going around uh, the night before uh, Jack Eichel was traded, there was a report surfacing about uh, how Matthew Kachuk, I don't remember what else was rumored to be in said deal, but Matthew Kachuk of the Calgary Flames was rumored to be part of a package uh, for the Calgary Flames that would go to Buffalo in exchange for Jack Eichel. Uh, Kevin Adams, the GM, said that uh, it, the package that was around was not the case. He did not mention Matthew Kachuk by name, but that was the report that surfaced. So I think it, we could kind of make that judgment that it was him being mentioned. Um, what's what's your take on it? It, it, it? Was that was that ever a play at all? Was that ever real? Like, what are you what are you thinking? Well, I think that there might have been a set of circumstances where Matthew Kachuk could have been part of a deal like this. But the other stuff that you're forgetting there, which doesn't make headlines because it's all draft picks and this and that, you know, it's undefined. You know, that's important. I mean, if, if they had have been trading Matthew Kachuk, uh, it's needless to say they weren't giving four other pieces in addition to that, which I believe is what the report was. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so uh, look, I, fact and fiction here gets a little sketchy because once a trade isn't made, I mean, it doesn't benefit anyone that was in the middle of those conversations to be too honest about what was happening. But, you know, I don't think Calgary, how best to put this, they really wanted Jack Eichel if they could get him. And so I think there's a scenario where they could have been compelled to include Matthew Kachuk in that deal. um, But that would have been the centerpiece of the, of the trade. You know, you wouldn't be trading him plus two first rounders and, and this and this and that. And, you know, a, a big aspect of this for the flames had they made this deal would have been, you know, shipping some salary back to Buffalo to make the numbers work, you know, as it turns out, because Vegas has so many injuries right now, they didn't have to do that. Right. I mean, Alex Tuck carries a salary, but you know, the Sabres are bringing him on because he's, he's signed, you know, for a number of years in the future. They like the player. He's actually from upstate New York. It's a local guy. You're getting paid. Syracuse. There you are. The Cuse. Uh, you got, you got Peyton Krebs, who was a first rounder in 2019. And, and so, you know, he's an attractive piece for the Sabres, you know, Buffalo didn't have to retain salary in this and they didn't take on any salary. We might call bad salary or salary they didn't want. And, you know, that's, that's huge. There wasn't that many teams that could do that. And a lot of it actually comes due to the fact that, that Mark Stone and Max Pacioretty are both injured right now for Vegas. So they're on LTIR. And, and what's interesting, you know, a final addendum to this trade, Julian, is, is Buffalo actually had to make a substitute move where they got Johnny Boychuk's uh, contract from the New York Islanders just to reach the salary floor. Oh, uh, because, you know, at this point in time, they had Jack Eichel counted on their roster. Uh, he wasn't on long term injured reserve. And so losing his $10 million salary, they actually had to bring some salary on to make the books balance. And so a huge component of this trade you know, was, was the cap machinations and, and, you know, what you had with, with Vegas uh, and and the Buffalo Sabres was an ability to make this work right now in this moment. You know, now Jack Eichel goes on LTIR. There's going to be some decisions for the Golden Knights down the road uh, when it comes time to activate them. But, you know, that's a few months hence from, from where we are today. And with Jack Eichel, as far as we know, the timetable for him to, to return is very much up in the air. It could be three months. It could be four months. It could even be five months. It, it, I think Kelly McCrimmon wasn't necessarily sure on, on the timeline on that. I'm not sure if you have any other insight on that. Well, you know, I, I would say this. I saw some people out there thinking that this is all just some master my employee, you know, a la Kucherov to, to get him back for game one of the playoffs. You know, I really actually... Don't believe that. And I understand, look, it's, it's fun to have a tinfoil hat on and conspiracy theories and all that stuff. You know, I, I do believe that the Golden Knights, as soon as Jack Eichel's healthy enough and ready to play, will want to get him in the lineup. will want to accelerate that, that, you know, it's going to be a big moment in his career, Julian. He last played March 7th, 2021. You know, it could conceivably yeah. be a full calendar year by the time he's healthy early March, you know, in 2022 now when he finally makes his Vegas debut. And so, you know, I don't think this is about skirting the cap or anything like that. It's really just, you know, he's having an artificial disc that isn't currently in his body put into his neck, you know, for lack of 
the medical ability to explain this, but I mean, this is a, a fairly significant procedure. Um, you know, it's one the Sabres didn't like for a number of reasons. You know, they wanted a fusion surgery, uh, which would have seen some discs fused together, but you know, you wouldn't be introducing something from outside the body to do it. Um, you know, that the, the thinking there is that that actually limits your mobility and there's an increased uh, chance you have to get another fusion in the future. Whereas if this ADR surgery, the artificial disc replacement works as it's designed to, you know, you, you maintain more range of motion. It's, it, it can be a shorter uh, time back and, you know, you're less likely to need it again in the future. All that is a big mouthful to say UFC fighters have got yes. this, but no professional hockey players have ever got it. So you're not, you're not working off of this is the standard time frame. And, you know, I think the idea is he'll be skating relatively soon after getting it, assuming everything goes well, um, you know, but it, it could be months, I think, getting his conditioning back, you know, before he can take the necessary contact to be comfortable with, with you know, that, that injury. I mean, this is a significant injury that, that this player suffered. And so, um, you know, I, I don't think there's any games going on here. I don't expect to see him at the Olympics. I know there's speculation about that. I mean, maybe... Mm -hmm. Maybe absolute best case scenario, maybe he heals quicker than you could ever imagine. Maybe, and I mean, really long shot that USA Hockey by early January can have an idea that this guy could maybe play for them because they have to name him to the team, of course, before the February tournament. But I think more realistic, we're looking at Jack Eichel playing games in March.